Good morning. I'm not going to do a walk around like I usually do because we're parked on the side of a busy highway here. We'll just put you guys on the dash here. There we go. Let's hammer down. Just for you guys, I think we'll drive through Hope. So this is the exit. We're on Trans-Canada Highway number one. Experience hope. I've never taken you guys this way before, ever. Because there's really no need to. But I was already on the off-ramp. I'm like, yeah, it's probably safer to go through town than uh, try to merge back onto the freeway. Yep, going yellow on us. So we are... So Trans-Canada Highway 1 goes northbound here on Hope, but we want to go up to Coquihalla. So we'll drive through Hope. It'll take a few minutes to get up to uh, Box uh, Canyon uh, chain up area. Nobody coming, we're good, we're good. So Trent Canada Highway 1 went north there. We are turning east, going through Hope the old way. This is called the Old Hope Princeton Way. And then we'll uh, climb out of Hope and join Highway 3 before we uh, before Highway 3 and 5 split I guess where Highway 5 starts then we'll we'll go on to Highway 5 the Coquihalla north towards Merritt now we got a lot of snow up there excuse the language on the radio I was going to say, we got a lot of snow on the Coquihalla the last couple of days, so it, it should be good today. It's been all thawing out, but it should be, it'll be messy up there, so I don't know how long the mirror camera will last, but uh, we'll have the dash cam and the rear-facing cam, I think, will stay clean. But yeah, the, um, the mirror cam will most likely get caked with mud, road grime, and Truckers, you can park in that parking lot on the left there and then go to the home restaurant here. Good, good food. Home restaurant. It's called home restaurant for a reason. It's like homemade cooked and baked goods. Good little restaurant. So if you don't want to tr stop at the Flying J or at the Esso truck stop, a little further down the road behind us. Stop over here at uh, the home restaurant and have yourself a good meal. They should pay me to say that. We just like that restaurant when we come through here. There's a brand new Boston pizza here as well. No room for trucks to park though. I guess there might be room for one truck to park down here on the shoulder and walk back to Boston pizza here on the right hand side park there and would be an option highway 3 open highway 5 open highway 97 C open we're not taking 3 but we're taking 5 and then 97 C we just call 97 C the connector Got a heavy load. I don't know how heavy because I stopped at the scale and the scale is broken. So Laidlaw's not giving out any tickets today.
Highway 3 above us here. But we are close to max weight. Flashers on. We don't have to merge on, we keep our own lane here. What's the maximum weight? We, we won't be maximum weight, but we're going to be close. We're maybe maybe a thousand, two thousand pounds below max weight. I really have no way of knowing for sure. But we had that first load from Klesnikov from Castlegar to Vancouver, and I'm basing my numbers off of off of those. We'll have to do a couple averages to fine tune and figure out exactly what my gauges read. So 5,500 on the steers plus uh, 17,000 on my drives. This is all in kilogram. Uh, probably we max is 24. I know I'm a little lighter on the on the on the bridge on the on the first trailer. I'm gonna say twenty-two thousand. Max would be twenty-four. And then the pup I know is very, very close to the maximum weight. So we're probably around the sixty-one thousand. Maybe between 60 and 62,000 kilograms. So probably 132, 133,000 pounds. So. Basically, when I'm hauling these two trailers, I'm considered a heavy haul. Here's the intersection where Highway 3... If I stay in this lane, I'll end up on Highway 3. Today, we want to continue on Highway 5. center lane here. I'll allow people that want to take three to go full blast on the shoulder lane there. I guess the right lane and then people that want to go full blast on the Coca-Cola can take the left lane. Beautiful sky today. Gorgeous, gorgeous day. Plus four degrees Celsius. So it is, it is on the cool side, but...
right, we're officially on Highway 5. Welcome to the Coca-Cola. <laughs> I was trying not to cough. Of course, as soon as you get on the Coca-Cola, the road goes really rough. Trying to avoid most of those potholes. Really need to fix that bridge. Even though it's on the cool side out there, it's plus three now. Um, it is beautiful. It feels good having the sun beating down on it. We've had so many dreary overcast days. It's nice to have some sunshine. Here's the sign, Coquihalla Highway. First downhill, you gotta make sure we don't over speed. I know, we have to do a hard climb and here we are going down a steep hill just to get through the rock cut. So if you hear people talk about the rock cut on the TV show, Highway Through Hell, that was the rock cut. Most of the rock cut's been blasted away and they've used that rock to fix the highway here from the flood two years ago. So the rock cut isn't as impressive as it used to be. Or just called the cut. Now we've got to climb a little bit before we get to uh, Box Canyon Chain Up and uh, the Bear Snow Shed. This should, for those of you that watch the TV show and don't kind of know the layout of the highway, this should give you a good feeling of the layout. When you're seeing parts of the video or parts of the TV show, you can kind of have a visual reference how far apart they are. We'll go to Larson Hill. So we'll, uh, we did the rock cut, we're gonna climb. Right to the top, through Bear, Bear Snow Shed, and then we'll go on the flat land a little while till we get to Larson Hill, because I know those are all spots that show up in the TV show. All the hot spots where trucks spin out, crash, where all the smashing happens, hence the nickname The Smasher. Othello Road. There's some beautiful Othello tunnels, the old railroad tunnels to the left-hand side here. Um, I've never checked if they've opened them again after the flooding. There was quite a bit of damage there due to flooding. Um, if they're open, they're worth going to the park and walking the trail through all the tunnels. Quite beautiful. Speed limit's 120 kilometers an hour. I am speed limited to 105. Not that it makes a difference. Most of it's steep enough that I can't even do 105. And I think that's what makes this highway dangerous. You got people in their little cars and SUVs doing 120 while we're climbing the hill at less than 30 kilometers an hour going through the bare snow shed. So there's 100 kilometers difference 
in the speed we are going versus cars at that that kind of closing rate it doesn't take much to crash somebody makes a quick lane change and uh, at 120 kilometers an hour there's not a lot of time to react to that On the side of the road, they're almost impossible to read, but there used to be these beautiful wooden signs that would um, list all the train stations, all the watering stations and sanding stations along the way as a train climbed up here. A lot of them are named after Shakespearean names. So if you see those little signs on the side of the road that, if you wonder what they're for, it's, it's where all the old train stations used to be. In fact, a lot of this highway is built on the old train grade. Seeing how steep the grade is, I can see why they needed all those little train stations to fill up with water again before continuing because those boilers were probably working hard, hard, hard. Probably had to fill up with coal as well. And lots of sand, you want to be spraying sand on the track for traction. Mile Creek. And if you're running into a Tesla or electric car, make sure you stop and hope and give your car a good uh, charge because it's going to be a hard little climb here and it's going to use a lot of juice. be a little more than your car thinks it's going to need. Pocahola is not flowing a lot right now. It's fairly shallow. so stuffy. Don't know why. I'm not even going to pretend to read some of those names. Remember all these videos are in 4K so if you want to read names Hit that little gear on the top and click to 4K and pause. Makes makes most of the signs quite easily to easy to read. bridges have been rebuilt. They're kind of nice over brand new bridges. I think all the bridges are done from the flooding a few years ago. I think it's two years ago. Over two years now. It'd be two and a half years ago. The highway got closed for a while due to all the flooding. I'm not sure how the construction is going on Highway 1 where all the damage was up by uh, uh, Jackass Mountain. 
had a re they're replacing a bridge there, and I'm not sure what to do with the train crossing. Here's the first chain up. Never seen anyone ever chain up over here, but I guess in a bad storm, could be possible. So right now we're doing 90 kilometers an hour and full throttle. It's a hard climb the whole way. Although the smasher is much harder. Radio was really busy and hopping over here talking about the truck driver that blew right through the brake check at the top of the mountain and by the bottom over here was on fire his brakes were all on fire and he was trying to put the fire out with washer fluid yeah Deliver this load in Kelowna, pick up a load right away as well, and then uh, go home for the weekend. And that load's going to get delivered to Burnaby. And I think Jess is coming with next week, so I know it's been a long while. kilometers an hour. This is not the smasher yet. This is a hard little climb. It gets a little flatter again and then after that is the smasher. Looking down at the uh, river down at the bottom. Beautiful, beautiful green colors with the fresh melting snow. So my understanding is the old railroad bed went straight through the valley over here. We're going to make a left-hand turn before that big mountain while the old railroad bed stayed toward the left. And the reason why they went off the grade was um, that section of the railroad was incredibly hard to keep open because of all the rock slides and the avalanches. my 
light so you could cut in front of me. We're going this slow. Let's, let's stay out of the middle lane. Doing 35 kilometers an hour. Sticking at the 34, 35. Over here, if I'm correct, well, if I understand correctly, the train track went, kept going straight to the right, while the Coquihalla goes to the left. If I'm wrong, let me know. In fact, I think I see a line in the mountain there where, where a road is or where maybe a past train track used to be. Looks like a little train track bed up there, the right hand side. Back up to 80 kilometers an hour. It's a lot drier than I expected it to be. Coming up on uh, the section that everybody wants to see. quite yet because this is the Horda chain up and Box Box Canyon is still a little way to up the road.
this is a tiny little chain up area. I guess now that I'm pulling super bees, I'll be chaining up more often next next winter. Alrighty, little waka waka there. Glad you didn't do that beside me, taking my mirror off. getting some more snow up here on the shoulders. And yes, everybody always thinks the snow is nice and beautiful and white. Not along the side of the road. These roads get sanded and all that sand gets blown up and into the snow on the shoulders. So the Near the road, the snow is always dirty and gross. There's just broken down trucks there. Catching up with the tanker, Super B tanker. Here we go, Fox Canyon chain up area.
hopefully we make it to Larson Hill before the end of the video. Before my memory cards are full, or I guess my batteries will die. Batteries will die first. Oh no, that's not a tanker. That's two flat decks with a tarp over top. than I do. See if we can get past him before... Oh, he's pulling off. Okay, that makes it a little easier. Uh, one of those truckers that has a gear shifter almost to the ceiling of the, the cab. We call those the super truckers. Shifter almost up to the cab, the seat all the way slammed to the floor, and as far back as possible so you can't even see the driver when you look into the window. It's third, definitely a different style. I'm like, I can't do that. I want to see the windows. I want to be able to look outside. with Trapline, the company I work for now. That's not legal. You're not allowed to be in the left lane. It's a rented ocean trailer, but... Highly illegal for trucks to be in the left lane here. Got to be a little patient. Stick, stick behind us slow trucks. There's two lanes for us, slow, for us trucks. The third lane's for cars only. Here's the uh, snow shed, the Great Bear Snow Shed. Here's the steepest section of the smasher, right through the snow shed. Twenty-five kilometers an hour. Going as fast as I can.
how fast the cars blow by in the dark tunnel all of a sudden there's two trucks side by side and you weren't ready for it whenever I climb this mountain in our pickup I don't do it at full speed that kind of closing rate is so dangerous Yes, legally you've got the third lane, but like you saw, there will be a jack wagon trucker taking the third lane. to the top still doing 25 kilometers an hour this is the section they call the smasher hey look there's a Sutco van truck coming down the hill Oversize coming by us. Pipes for the pipeline, it looks like. Oh, yeah, another three wide. Eagle Motor Group running illegal, three wide. Oh, another one. I'm not the slowest truck going up here. I've only got 500 horses. I thought I was one of the smallest, weakest trucks going up the mountain, but obviously that's not true. We're at 27 kilometers an hour.
signs all the way up here is no trucks in left lane. And yes, when two Super Bs are passing each other, it kind of sucks if you're faster, but just, you just can't go in the left lane. Just, just wait a little bit. Zapatos, something like that. Zapatos brake check on the left side there for guys going down the hill. The uh, right lane ends up ahead, so I'm just going to stay in this lane. Summit. Well, chain off area. Summit's a little bit down the road. We made it! And he's allowed to be in that lane because the three lanes have ended. So we're allowed to be in the left lane now. Now the old train grade, once again, if I'm right, <coughs> is in this valley, quite a bit below us, quite a bit down. It doesn't go at the, to the same elevation we did, so the, the train, train grade stays a little lower. There's a silly third lane over here for some silly reason. It's only a couple hundred meters long. It's like, what's the point? Oh, the summit sign is missing. This is the Coca-Cola summit right here. That's as high as we're gonna get. It's all downhill from here, other than, you know, the uphills. This used to be a toll highway. You used to have to come to a stop up ahead here and pay a toll. And the toll, the toll was... Watch out for something. Um, there was a toll on this highway until the highway was paid off. 
And once they paid off the highway, they removed the toll booth, and now there's these little rest areas up there for cars. Not really great for big rigs. Here's Dry Gulch. Actually, just below us, on our right-hand side, way down to the bottom, is a beautiful train trestle bridge. But it's quite a bit lower. The, like I said, the train track elevation is way down there. So. But if you want a rest area up here, if you're trucking through here, um, go to Britton Creek Rest Area, the sign over here. You see that big sign for the rest area? Don't stop at the next rest area. Go to the one after. It's just a few miles further down. This is where the um, where the uh, toll booths were. Um, there was no median. There were toll booths from from all the way from the right to the left, further than these buildings, right out. Just a line of toll booths. So yeah, if you're trucking through here. Don't spend the night at that rest area. Literally two kilometers down the road is another one. And that one's just a little off the road and really nice and quiet and peaceful and a heated heated washroom. No no food or anything like that or fuel, but better than sleeping right along the side side of a highway. Lots of trucks, truck parking area. I've never seen that rest area full ever. And it's accessible from both directions. If you're northbound or southbound, this rest area is accessible for both. For those guys that sleep at the Zapatos, however you pronounce that, um, brake check, it'd be better to stop here, sleep here, and then go down the mountain. Car's got to be doing 20, 30 kilometers over the speed limit. So um, we're no longer following the Coquihalla River. Now we're following the Cold uh, Cold Stream, I think. Let's see if I can catch a name. I can't remember. I always forget the name of the river, but it flows down into Merritt. Cold something.
we just kind of hang out on top of the mountain for a while. That's fairly, fairly flat, just kind of up and down a little bit. Fairly flat and easy going to Larson Hill. No reduced speed limit here, so that means they've probably fixed the bridges all the way. They should be all the way done, because last time we came through it looked like they were almost done. The bridges should all be fixed up here. I can't see, I can't see a reason why they wouldn't be. the video already. Oh, will we make it to Larson Hill before my batteries die? Forest fire came through here. Is it two years ago now? So the hills on the left hand side there have all been burnt. So normally you wouldn't be able to see the, the snow up on those top of those mountains. But uh, everything burnt, they seem a little more naked. Oh yeah, here's one of those bridges. Looks like you don't have the water flow 100% right there. Juliet Creek. It's a pretty bumpy new bridge. It's not smooth. First time I've done that bridge at full speed in two years, two and a half years.
there's the other bridge that got washed out. All done. Yeah, the road's a lot drier than I expected it to be, considering how much snow there was. Although it doesn't look like they got as much snow here. Either way, nice day for the, for the road. Oh, right. Um, that bridge had a sign on there, not cold stream, cold water, cold water river for all of those ye yelling at me. That, that last bridge there said cold water river. What we got ahead there, I see some flashing lights, is that like a moving load? Yeah, I think it's a snow plow. I think that's what it is. I think it's a snow plow. It's starting to get wetter up over here, so... We haven't lost our shoulder cam yet. We, we probably will now. Not our shoulder cam. Mirror cam. sign cold water river One degree Celsius up here, a little bit cooler up top. Welcome to Larson Hill. There, that should give you guys a really good feel for how far apart all these places are that are the hot spots for that TV show, Highway Through Hell. And it's usually not this section that's the problem at Larson Hill, it's usually the other side going down. Or is that called something different? Because I can see trucks spinning out over here too.
beam is going somewhere. I'll be called Larson Hill, I think, because we go down, right down to Cold River again, do this big climb, and then all the way down, and then we have to do another climb after that to get to Merritt, but we won't do that on today's video, save that for another day. the highway on the other side we have to go back up so I'm going to go a little slower than necessary. I do want to upshift and uh, hit max speed at the bottom. Just got to do the math. I think I can upshift now already. I want to start the top nice and slow. I started at 65 kilometers an hour. Slowly gain speed. Four-way flashers off again. I think I got it right. long video. Hopefully it was worth it. Hopefully the other cameras are all still all rolling. I know the dash cam is still rolling. For now I'm going to bail out of here. watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. It's 
been a long while since we've come down this route. Kind of fun to do some different routes again. It's been a bit of a, we literally delivered two loads this week. It's been a bit of a slow week. Hopefully next week we're getting a little more into the rhythm of things and get back on, on schedule. And hopefully we get to run this highway more often. For now, I'm out of here. You guys have an awesome weekend. Come hang out with us tomorrow with a bonus video. Just hit the join button at any any tier. You can get the bonus video tomorrow. And uh, then uh, also join us on Sunday on the other channel, uh, Sleep With A Trucker, for a nice long ASMR video with me shutting up and not talking at all. So if I talk too much for you guys, check out the other channel where I don't talk at all. I am out of here. You guys absolutely rock. <laughs>